Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and in today's video I'm going to introduce you to AI Builder because this truly adds intelligence to your business. So in this video I'm going to cover three main parts. First of all, introduce you to AI prompts and models. Second, I'll go through things such as credits, tokens, licenses, yes I said that L word, and even how to monitor all the activity. And then finally, as a bonus, I'll show you how to utilize Tokenizer in a third-party service called OpenAI. That will truly blow your mind. So stick around because this will set your foundation on how to either use or support AI Builder. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Now, when it comes to an overview of AI Builder, it actually boils down to two different types. It's the AI models and the AI prompts. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. It's like, Daniel, there is also document automation. Doesn't that fall into one of these categories? And the answer is kind of no, because document automation is an extension of these two models where Power Automate also comes in and fills some of the missing gaps. But the core, as far as the AI builder goes, the core are these two things, which is AI models and AI prompts. So as the name suggests, AI models are those that you can choose from several model types that are already suited for different scenarios, business scenarios. But the AI prompts is basically using natural language, which goes ahead and leverages the large language model or the LLM to perform these tasks. So let's deep dive into each of these. And let's start first of all with our AI models. Now for these AI models, it actually breaks down into two subcategories. There is the custom and the pre-built. Now the pre-built models are those that are ready to use. You can literally take the intelligence that is already available and apply that to your apps and flows. But the custom is completely the opposite. Those are the models that you build from scratch. And so they can be tailored to exactly your business needs. Keep in mind though, these ones definitely need to be trained and then also published. We'll take a look at more of that down the road. Now, again, each of these AI models, especially the ones that are already ready, there's 18 templates of them. Five of them are the custom ones, which is something that helps you get started. And 13 of them are pre-built. And all these models basically break down into four different categories. There's documents, text, structured data, and images. And even for all of these different categories, say for example, documents, it's six of them. One of them is a custom one that you can actually build yourself. And the other ones are five pre-built. So you can see these are the different types of AI models and already work has been put in by Microsoft to help you get started easier with less work on your side, specifically the pre-built ones. So let's now take a look at the AI prompts. Like I mentioned, these are prompts that uses the large language model to perform a tasks. And out of the box, there are 37 templates of these. And this number might change by the time you've actually watched this video. So the three different categories of these are language and text analysis, content creation and management, and task and role specific tools. Each of them have such important templates that are already available and you can go ahead and build on it. So on the extreme left side, when you see language and text analysis, there is 18 templates available over there. Examples are summarize and extract text, sentiment analysis, and then also language detection. But if we go and take a look on the extreme right for the tasks and role specific tools, well, there's only two templates. These are used by the IT experts and also to identify tasks. Now, the other neat functionality of AI Builder is that once these prompts or models are created, you can go and leverage them across all of these other four important services that Microsoft has to offer. There is Power Automate, Power Apps, SharePoint, and Teams. And each of them play a very important role in enhancing your business. All right, so now I wanna switch gears a little bit and talk about the AI Builder licensing and credit management, because this is important for you to understand both as a maker and as the administrator. So let's tackle this first one, which is called as credits. Credits basically means it is the amount given to you to get some AI work done. It's very similar to the concept of credit cards. What credit cards does is there's already a predetermined amount of dollars that you can spend that comes along with your credit cards. And that's the exact thing over here. When you go ahead and buy licenses, they come with certain credits and those credits add to your pool 
in your tenant. And that's what you can use to go ahead and build all these AI models. So for example, if you build something to extract text from PDF, well, that can take up to 300 credits depending on the size of your PDF file. So that's to make sense? Great, because now I'm gonna talk a little bit about tokens. Now, the two are kind of the exact same and yet different. So let me explain it to you in this way. When you go ahead and start using AI Builder, which is the low code way, there we focus on the credit consumption. However, it takes a certain number of tokens to actually build a credit. So tokens actually gives you the exact amount of consumption that you are doing for any of these AI tasks that you're performing for your problem solving. And then a certain number of tokens will add up to create a credit. And I'll show you what that means just in a few minutes. And then finally, it is the license because depending on which type of license you purchase, you get a certain amount of credits. And I'll show you that as well. So this is a very, very important piece that you need to understand. So let me show you the different type of licenses that you may already have and how many credits come along with it. So a guaranteed way to know exactly how many credits you have in your tenant is first of all to be a Power Platform Administrator and then come over here to the Power Platform Admin Center, also known as PPAC. In there, go to your resources and then go to capacity. And then once over here in the summary tab itself, if you go ahead and scroll down right over here, you will see the AI Builder credits. Now, at some point, you may have also gone and used some of the example credits or the test credits that you may have, and therefore you see these two bars. That's the thing in my side. I actually have this blue one and I have this yellowish tan as well. All in all, both of them tell me that my max is 9,500 credits. But the question now you should be asking is, where is this 9,500 coming from? And that's basically what I did. Because in my case, I got it from my Power Apps and Power Automate premium licenses. So let's go and see exactly how many credits I get from each of those licenses. And for that, I'm actually gonna go and switch over to the latest Power Platform licensing guide that I have available right now, which is February of 2025. So if you are watching this video a later time down the road, make sure that you go to your latest licensing guide at that time, because it's usually about two a year. Um, and therefore for me right now, the latest one is the February one. Um, it might be the same for you, but just make sure that you're watching the latest one, all right? So let's scroll down just a little bit as we're going down over here. And what I wanna specifically look at are the two licenses. One of them is for the Power Apps and the other one is for the Power Automate. So here you go, this is for the Power Apps and that is for the Power Apps Premium License. And as I come over here, it specifically says that for every Power Apps Premium one, basically every subscription of that, the Power Apps Premium, as far as the AI builder goes, I get 500 credits for each of that per user license. That's pretty awesome, all right? And this is what adds up. This is basically what's happening to me. So this is Power Apps. If I scroll down just a little bit, here we are. We're looking at Power Automate Premium. And if I take a look over here on the Power Automate subscriptions, basically right over here, you see for AI Builder, for each of these Power Automate Premium license, each of them, I get 5,000, which is 10 times more than what I get on the Power App side. It is pretty awesome that how the Power Automate Premium gives us so much more license. But either way, from a Power App side or the Power Automate side, when you buy these premium licenses in bulk, so many of these credits come along. So is it making sense how I got my 9,500? Good, because there's one more other thing I want you to look at over here. And that is this AI Builder Rate Card, basically a table that shows you how the consumption happens. Now, I just had to scroll down quickly, so I just saved the time, but this currently is on page 27, um, and you will actually find something similar. Again, if it depends on which of the licensing guide that you're seeing, the page number might change, but this is what you're looking for. So over here you see a very important thing. There is the concept of the tokens. Tokens, again, is very similar to what credits does, but it's a different breakdown. And the way I basically talk about is cents and dollars. So we have 100 cents makes a dollar, something similar over here. So for the power platform side, specifically on the AI builder, each of these different capabilities has a different breakdown of tokens. So for example, the AI prompts, which will actually create the text with GPT-40 mini. So for that one, it actually consumes 1000 tokens, which also equals one credit. But if you go ahead and use the AI prompts with GPT-40, 
in that case it is consuming 1000 tokens or 20 credits. So is it making sense that the tokens and the credits are similar? It's just that there is a conversion and therefore it helps to go through each of these. So for example, document processing is one of the things I recently did. So when it comes to the training part of it, there is no credit or token consumption. However, document processing is on a per page basis. So for therefore, for every page, you are consuming 8,000 credits. And then for all these other things like receipts, invoices, identifying documents, very, very common use cases of AI Builder. In that case, the per page over here is 32 credits. So it's very important for us to at least have a overview of what some of this means and also bookmark this, download it or keep it somewhere because when you're going ahead and building some of these things, you will revisit this to actually understand how all that credit consumption is going on. So hopefully this part has helped you because now I wanna double click on this whole concept of tokens and how that breaks down into actually the number of words. So there's actually a third party website called openai.com and over there, there's a whole section dedicated called tokenizer. So what that is basically does is it's a tool to actually help you understand how pieces of text might be tokenized and breaking down based on the language model that we are using. So there you can actually understand how this total count of tokens works in a specific type of text. And we'll see a demo of that because each of these models consume differently. So for example, GPT 4.0 may actually consume more models than say the GPT 3.5. And it's very important for you to understand that because it depends on which model that you're using in the back end. And one of the neat things about this tokenizer in the open AI is it actually gives you a place to do some testing. So you can immediately understand how the token consumption is happening. So let me jump over and actually show you this in action. So here we are in open AI platform, specifically the tokenizer feature. And this is where we can actually learn how models process text using tokens. So it gives you a good understanding of how AI Builder in the Microsoft realm is also doing that. And the neat thing is it gives us all the three different types. So there is GPT-40 or GPT-40 Mini, there is GPT-3.5 and GPT-4, and even the GPT-3 Legacy. Now, what I really like is that on the bottom over here, it's actually giving us a rough approximation. It says, a helpful rule of thumb is that one token generally corresponds to about four characters of text. So this basically does a rough calculation for, so for every 100 tokens, you're getting approximately 75 words. So I would say use these numbers loosely, don't completely depend on, uh, depend on it, because it does vary based on what your scenario is. And therefore, I love how it's actually given us some examples. So for example, I'll switch over to the GPT-40, and I'm gonna go and say, show example. And there you go, it did a couple of things. It gave us an example, it goes and tells us how many tokens and characters, but then it also gives a breakdown. So let's first slow down and actually see what this description was. It says, it says, many words mark to one token. Then there's a comma, but some don't, colon, indivisible, period. And then there's another whole line after that, and then there's an icon, and then another whole line after that, and there is also some numerical values. So what I love is if I scroll down over here, you see how this color matching happens? That is important for us to understand how these tokens are assigned because there's 53 tokens. However, there's 252 characters. So for example, this colon that we have, that is actually identified as a single token. But for some reason, this hand emoji over here, well, that is actually broken down into these different types of tokens because the hand emoji is transferred into some text, specifically four different types of text. So you see how this is happening in the back end? The token count is completely different and it varies based on which GPT that you have. But I'll get to that in a minute. I wanna also finish off on these numerical values. You see it's from one all the way to nine. Well, that breakdown also is a little different. So there's one, two, three, well, that's one token. Then there's four, five, six, well, that's another token. Then seven, eight, nine, but zero is there by itself. So it does seem a little bit confusing sometimes. It's not very predictable but at least now you have a good understanding on how it works. Now, I wanna show you one more thing because we were on GPT-40. If I switch that over now to GPT-3.5, you see the whole thing changed because GPT-40 was consuming 53 tokens. But if I went down to 3.5, it's actually 57 tokens. And over here, the breakdown is a little bit different and mostly similar, but a little bit different. So it's very, very important for you to actually come over here and do some testing because if you're gonna start using AI Builder um, for basically doing some custom prompting, then come over here. 
put in examples of your prompts and get a good idea of how much tokens you're going to consume. Because now that you know tokens over here, you can go back to the licensing guide and get a good understanding. Okay, this is the type of credits that I will build. Pretty neat. I definitely want you to bookmark this website. Now, because this is an introduction video, I have to introduce you to also the Azure AI document intelligence. Now, this is a more on the pro developer side because you can directly tap in to the Azure AI using your software development kit, the SDK. And over here, you can actually work with large volumes of data. In fact, over here, some of the licensing and the pricing is at a per 1000 pages rate. In fact, on the AI Builder, we were seeing it at a one page rate. No, over here, it is at a 1000 pages. And there is a large number of page volumes that you can put over here. And therefore, there are also two different licensing plans. There is the pay as you go model over here and also different tiers depending on high volume usage that you have. Now in the future down the road, I may cover a deep dive on this as well. Right now I'm focusing purely on the low code side, which is the AI builder. However, at least I had to introduce you to this pro code technique, which is the Azure AI document intelligence. So now that you have a good overview of what AI builder is all about, in the next video, I'm going to drill down into the governance and the administration. There are certain settings that you absolutely need to be aware of to make sure all of these credits are correctly and assigned to different environments. And there is a setting that you may want to consider disabling as well, just so that the utilization of these credits don't go rogue, say in the default environment. And hopefully this will all give you the confidence for you to start leveraging AI Builder. Hey, if you have a few seconds, can you click on that like button and even consider subscribing it? Because it's just two easy clicks for you, but boy, it makes a big difference for me. Also, if you don't mind, can you put in a comment below? Because that really boosts this video up to reach a higher audience. And once again, thank you for watching this video.